The idea that uh, you feel really good about the goals, the number one thing is you get a little endorphin rush in relation to the goal. So if you practice all of that, you put all that together into a practice. Now your practice may not look like mine, it may not look like hers. Yeah, it's whatever works for you. Yeah, and so how do you know it works for you? It feels good. Yeah, it, that's the key, is you wanna have this little buzz or endorphin rush or feeling good. And, you want, and a lot of times I want to be able to even, after I'm done reading them, just be able to sit in it for a while, put on some good music and enjoy those endorphins as I, as I let go of any attachment or aversion to the goal wanting to make it happen. And then what happens is it slowly over time seeps into your subconscious mind. In this video, we want to talk about uh, consistency practice uh, that you're going to use to really implement this tension uh, idea, the schedule with tension, getting into tension, and uh, and really just skyrocketing your success in this area. I'm back here with the <laughs> lovely Anna Maria, and we're going to be talking about this. She's going to be giving me her input. but. One of the things I figured out with tension a long time ago was that if you're not consistent with the tension, not much happens. Like if I start to knock over dominoes, but then I stop at a certain point, they, they stop. I got to knock some more over um, and I just wait. Nothing's going to happen. Actually, it's like almost like I have to go back and reset all the dominoes again. I don't know if that's a good analogy. It kind of sucks, but the basic idea is there. If you start something and you're consistent with it for a week or two and then you stop, you actually lose the progress because you go all the way back to the beginning and you start again every time you start. So consistency is really the key. For this, I want you to read the book, uh, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. Really powerful read. I um, love it. It's a, actually a very good, uh, very good read. You did read it. Yes, I'm highly impressed. recommend it. I'm impressed. Yeah, that's a powerful read. I always tell people that and then they put it in their top books after they get it. Uh, so that's awesome. You just read it, read it recently? Uh, I read it this summer in July and uh, I really thought that it's exactly what people are missing out when they're trying to grow personally or uh, professionally. They uh, are either not consistent or they, uh, yeah, it's lack of consistency. It's the 1% that adds up to another 1% that helps the final growth. It may not look like a growth in the beginning, but when you look back... Well, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't look like a growth. Because in the beginning, maybe I'm just doing a little action. Like I'm looking at you and I, I pushed a little tension with the barista today, or I met this girl and I said, hi, and there's a little tension, not much happened, didn't get a phone number. But doing that every day consistently over a week on end, weeks on end, without beating yourself self up, just learning to relax, in a month's time, this, this, this compound can happen. Now, if you understand how compounding interest works, it's the eighth wonder of the world is what we like to say. And, and the reason is, is because when you look at it, it doesn't look like much is happening. And if we double a penny every day, and you can do this with a calculator if you want, double a penny every day for 31 days, you'll have over $10 million. But you don't see the growth of that $10 million until the last week or so, or the last few days, really. There's a skyrocket effect of success that happens. A lot of you guys start to do work on a regular basis, little tension, little tension, stuff starts to build, compounding starts to build, compounding starts to build, you're getting reactions from the world, and then as soon as that tension causes a reaction that's a little bigger than you're used to, which could be good or bad, but there's still, but all of it's really good because all of it's growth and learning, and it's a little bigger than you're used to, you stop and you shrink it all back down because of all that tension and responsibility you don't want to start managing and start dealing with. And then when it gets all shrunk back down again, you start again. Then you wonder why nothing ever really changes. And this is the power of compounding interest. So what I recommend is, is monthly goals. Like set a goal for the month. This is my practice with tension for the next month. And I'm going to start every day and I'm going to get up and have a morning practice where I, I read my goals. First, I meditate usually for 10 minutes. Then I read my goals and then maybe even meditate on those goals for a few minutes. And then a lot of times I would do exercise or I do some order of that. Actually, I think that order was a little off. I think the way I did it when the whole month I was in, um, almost a month I was in Chile, uh, the way I was doing it there was I would get up in the morning, I would do my exercise, then I would uh, read my goals, then I would meditate and just do a lot of releasing and surrendering of anything that came up around those goals. And I would do that every day consistently. That was what I committed to for that month. And the goals can change. You can write a new goal every month and you can work on it consistently a little bit at a time. And that consistency creates a huge change in life. One month may seem like it does a lot, but wait till three months, wait till a year. 
and then wait till uh, in that first year, if you've never done a daily reading of a goal setting process, watch your life change. Now, within the goal setting process, I'll have a goal. This is something I like to do. And I don't know if I've ever explained this to you, but I'll have a goal. Uh, mm -hmm. I allow myself to, let's say I allow myself to, uh, to, to meet a beautiful woman and have a, a beautiful date, you know, this month or whatever it is, or I choose meeting a beautiful woman, having a date, or I am. If you like third person better, you can say, I'm having an experience of going on a date this month. This, my body's having an experience of going on more and more dates this month. Whatever feels good to you. The key here is, is a lot of people like to use really definitive goals. I am doing X by X date. The problem with that is if it creates too much tension in your body and your body binds and you can't release that tension, you're gonna push it away. The key with a goal is that it needs to feel good. The ultimate determiner of a powerful goal is does it make my body tingle? Does it feel good? And is it worded in a way that is positive, but at the same time, I feel really good about it? and then you work your way up to a more definitive goal if that's the case. First you get it good, feeling good with the, the less definitive and you work your way up or, you, you, or whatever it takes to get to that good feeling state getting more definitive. Then beneath the goal I have what are called uh, supporting statements. And any place I have a negative thought or a negative belief that comes up in relation to the goal, well girls don't like me, um, I can't do that, I'm not consistent enough. I know I'm just gonna fall off on this. Brian said to be consistent. I write another little affirmation that counters that, um, that, that inconsistency. So uh, women don't like me. I'm, I'm seeing more and more every day that women, uh, or women are liking me more and more each day and I'm really enjoying it. Something like that, if it feels good to you. Um, I bec I've become very consistent with my goal process for this next month. Uh, I am very consistent with my goal process for this next month, or I allow myself to be very consistent with this goal process for the next month. And I read those every day too. The key with each one of those is I also work on feeling good. And as I read these goals in the, in the support, the goal and the supporting statement every day, when I read the supporting statement, I allow myself to adjust and change those day by day throughout the month while I keep the goal the same. See, I want to get the whole point of the supporting statement is to accomplish, help me accomplish the goal. The goal is the goal for the month. I want to stay super consistent on the goal so I have a habit of follow through so I don't quit things halfway through. But the supporting statements can change every day because they're adjusting the support of that goal. My goal in reading this every morning is to get a little endorphin rush, to get feeling really good. And then I use the releasing process from letting go, the releasing process we teach here on any resistance that comes up to the goal and even attachment to getting the goal itself. This idea that I have to get this goal. If I'm reading an affirmation and I'm like, I have to make it happen, I, have, I want to release all that. It's, it's more like I, I feel it get buzzed by the affirmation and then I surrender it like you let a bird go or a balloon go and then I just let it go. And that's the goal. And then I just enjoy the endorphin rush that's left over from doing that. Does all this make sense to you so far? Yeah, I've, uh, I've actually um, heard you talking about it previously and uh, I'm trying it myself. So I have my uh, list of goals because I'm an achiever. <laughs> I'm a goal getter. <laughs> um, so uh, that's what I'm trying to do every day. I'm reading my goals and trying to see how they feel to me. If there's a, any uh, tension related to them or an attachment or maybe sometimes I would reject them and then I see what happens there, why, where there's a rejection towards them because it's my goal and then what happened to it. So I'm working my way. Through. So this is a good point. Like sometimes you'll read a goal or a supporting statement it's often mm -hmm. and one day it feels good, the next day it feels a little off. And then what do you do? Well, you, you work on releasing whatever may be under the, the rejection yes. that's, that's connected to the to Yeah, the do you ever read a supporting statement and it has no more power or juice? It just, it's not bad or good, it's just neutral. Yeah, well, that's the one when you have to either change it or replace it or just get, get rid of it. Yes, that's exactly what happens. This is how the, the document becomes a living, breathing thing that as you read it every day, you're seeing those supporting statements change to help make that goal come true. And that's an indicator to my subconscious mind that it's coming towards me as yeah. they grow and evolve. Uh, and sometimes just a little word change and suddenly it's got power again too. And it mm -hmm. feels really good and it's back alive. And so that's why I love this process so much. It's, it's kind of a living, breathing process. So we're looking at several things here. We're looking at consistency with the, with the process. There's also a morning ritual uh, to help uh, to keep the process going. So an actual daily process where 
where I like to get up and do a little mobility and, and opening my body exercises and, uh, and then some exercises too and to wake the body up, then meditation, then reading the goals. So that's that whole morning ritual is very powerful. And then the idea that uh, you feel really good about the goals. The number one thing is you get a little endorphin rush in relation to the goal. So if you practice all of that, you put all that together into a practice. Now your practice may not look like mine, it may not look like hers. Yeah, it's whatever works for you. Yeah, and so how do you know it works for you? It feels good. Yeah, it, that's the key is you want to have this little buzz or endorphin rush or feeling good. And you want, and a lot of times I want to be able to even, after I've done reading them, just be able to sit in it for a while, put on some good music and enjoy those endorphins as I, as I let go of any attachment or aversion to the goal of wanting to make it happen. And then what happens is it slowly over time seeps into your subconscious mind. So I encourage you to make a plan of action every 30 days or so around a goal process. Set up your goal, set up your supporting statements. What do you want to create? And every 30 days, change it. Like, how close did you get to your goal this month? Do you need to continue with this one? Do you need new supporting statements? Do you need to deepen it? Do you need more detail now? And then you set it for another 30 days and continue to do this for a while and watch how much your life changes. If you understand the consistency principle, remember the first few weeks of reading the goal, not much might happen. But third week, fourth week going in, you might start to see a lot of changes. And if you keep working with the goal, more and more changes. If resistance starts to come up, have you had any experiences where you're reading the goal and all this resistance starts to come out of your body? It, it can happen. Yeah, and what's that about? You may think you don't deserve it or you uh, think you're not good enough. I mean, the, the reasons can vary a lot and it really depends on your the issues that are. And that's because deep down inside, you have a lot of resistance, something like she said, some story and it's starting to come up now. That's a good thing. That's what I wanted to mm -hmm. emphasize. That's a good thing because now it gives you a chance to work with that. You can create new supporting statements for the resistance. You can release on it, whatever you need to do and you continue on down the road. That's why we have an end result. The idea is that we want to, this, I'm not going to change anything for at least this period of time, even if all that resistance and crap comes up because that might be the period you most want to turn away. And that's the period you most want, you actually most want to go in deeper and see what's on the other side of that after it goes away. So I want to encourage you to start this process, get to work right away, apply it to the idea of tension, like just playing with tension for a whole month straight and see what comes up for you and all the principles we talked about in these videos and watch what happens in your life. And I actually encourage you to do a three month process, not one month. In one month though, each month reevaluate everything and then do another month and another month. And it's really important to have these, these end dates where you reevaluate so it's not indefinite. Because if your mind sees an indefinite period, your mind will want to let something go. Uh, but if it sees an end date, it can work towards that end date and then start to reevaluate what you created in that period of time. Is there anything else you want to add? You only fail when you stop trying and working. Yeah, so that, come back to that consistency. Get in there, make it happen. It was a pretty brief description of the, of the goal process because this, this video is more about having a morning ritual and any type of morning ritual you want to create is great. There's tons of videos of morning rituals, but create something that feels good to you. If you like the idea of this specific goal process and you want us to go deeper, maybe put some examples where we discuss what, uh, where we help somebody create a goal process where you can see them feeling good. Maybe I'll work with Anna Maria's or one of the other coaches and we get to see when they're nailing their goal or when they're a little off. I'll be glad to do a video on that. Make sure to comment below and let us know in the next few weeks. And if, if, if I see some good comments on that, we'll see about creating that. Also um, make sure to comment because Anna Maria is gonna be looking at the comments and she'll be commenting for the next few weeks after this video comes out to uh, on direct commenting back on anything that you comment towards her. So if you wanna have a little conversation or dialogue, make sure to put that in the video too. Also remember to like the video if you liked it, subscribe and hit that notifications button. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe right now and then hit that notification button. Oh, by the way, one more thing, make sure to share the video. It really helps. If you know somebody that needs this work or needs help with something, just be, be generous and share because it, it really helps us to grow the channel and get more of this information disseminated out to people that need it and we really appreciate it. So with that said, remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.